Hello, I'm Fred McNeil, and thank you for watching QAC TV7. We've started a new show called Where Are They Now? And we're about our 10th episode. We interview former teachers, bus drivers, custodians, administrators, etc., people who taught your children, probably taught you, okay? And you get a chance to say, where the heck are they? I didn't know that about them. And let me welcome my good friend, Dr. Bernie Sadusky. Bernie, thank uh, you thank for you. being here. Yeah. And first of all, congratulations. You're officially retired, officially now, right? I, well, officially, yes. <laughs> I did work till I was 74. You did better than I did. And, you know, I'm not an uh, advocate of retirement. Yeah. So, but you got to enjoy it. And I yes. did for a long period of time. And, uh, but I am officially retired. Good. Congrats. I know Dorothy Ann's thrilled. <laughs> like my that wife. Is like one, my wife. That's yeah. one of the words in the vocabulary yeah. that. <laughs> Usually she throws at me. <laughs> yeah. Now, let me, Brady, let's go way back. A lot of people don't know. Where were you originally from? Where was home? Okay, so uh, this is a coal mining area in northeastern Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. It's a small town, one mile square, 10,000 people. Yeah, the name of the town was Swerville, Pennsylvania. Right. It was a coal mining time, uh, town. And uh, when people say the other side of the track, we were the other you side. You were the other side. side. All right. People on the good side of the track, they had the riverfront, and we had the mountain and the coal mines. And uh, so it was the, the basis for the town was immigrants. Okay. I, uh, my address in Pennsylvania was on Poland Street. It was actually, the oh, next wow. street over was Warsaw Street. <laughs> the next street <laughs> over was Cossack Street. It was an ethnic So you could, you could get uh, an idea that it was a Polish... Slovak neighborhood, okay. uh, first, second generation. Well, your buddy so, Joe Olak, bless his soul, used to get mad at me because I would say, oh, you guys are all from Wilkesboro. He said, no, we're not. Yeah. And, and he said, Fred, we're not. Well, there were great, great pride. And one of, the, one of the reasons that he probably said that is he had great rivalries between the towns. Okay. Small high schools. Sure. My high school was 400 students. And it was an advantage and it was a disadvantage. But the next town over, uh, you would have a rivalry. And a rivalry. So when people uh, want to express their pride, well, I wasn't from Wilkesbury. I was from near Wilkesbury, but my hometown was Swerful. Oh, very. Yeah. You, Joe was very made it very clear. Fred, you're no, no, you're, you're all wrong. All right. <laughs> now, Bernie, were you growing up? Were you a sports guy? I know, but a yeah. theater guy. What would you do? Oh uh, no. So there's two things I learned growing up: how to work. Okay. Because uh, this was a poor neighborhood, mm -hmm. and the second thing was how to play sports. Okay. All right. And consequently, if uh, regardless of the season, all you had to do was walk out and you got an, enough. Kids uh, are playing something. Playing. They're playing baseball, they're playing football, they're playing basketball. And uh, that's how you've learned the game. There, there's no camps. Yeah. You just go out and compete. And you didn't pay $500 for a week. You went out and played uh, in the no. fields, right? No, we just, uh, and you know, obviously TV was black and white, yeah. only a couple of channels. Mm -hmm. So, and your parents would say, Get go out. outside. Get out. Go outside. So I learned, I learned how to work, and I learned how to um, enjoy, sports. Uh, enjoy sports. Now, Bernie, I had the pleasure. I met your mother. You, I didn't meet your dad. Now, your dad, you told, uh, ran, what did your dad do? I forgot. So my, my dad, uh, uh, when he retired, mm -hmm. was a um, mechanic, a turbine mechanic in a steam-generating power plant. Okay. All right? And he worked his way up as a laborer when they built it. So he must have, when they built the power plant, he must have been a good worker. They offered him a job. And then as most things do, the Second World War interrupted. And uh, obviously, my, my parents are married, and he winds up in Florida, West Palm Beach, Florida. Oh, not too bad, dude. And they're not building, they're building yeah. it. Well, at that time, as you know, Fred, Army and the Air Force were one. Yeah. Okay. Army and Air Corps. My so, dad was yeah. there. That's what he was So doing. before he gets uh, uh, sent overseas, he's part of building, I guess, what's These now. Yeah. What, yeah, West Palm Beach Airport. Oh, wow. So the government built, built it, all okay. right? And when he came back, he's offered his job, but he had no skills. He's a laborer. And one of the things that pp &L, Pennsylvania Power and Light Company, was really good at was saying, you know, if you better yourself, we got a better job for you. Coincidentally, uh, the Navy Reserve 
uh, was open to whatever branch of service you were in. Okay. So he joined the Navy Reserve, oh, I didn't know went to Navy. school on Monday nights, <laughs> and the ships had turbines. So he, he learned how, how to, to be a turbine mechanic, goes back to PP, well, obviously, still working at PPNL, and he gets pr promoted in the sense that he's still a laborer, but he's got top, he's, he's top. got a skill. He was Rudy, right? Rudy. Rudy? Okay, yeah. okay. He, Very good. Yeah. And your mom's name? Margaret. Margaret, okay. I had the pleasure of meeting her. And, and my, yeah. my mom, you know, I mean, it's like the women, uh, you had to get a job. So you either were a stay-at-home mom. My mom worked in a factory, in a cigar factory. Really? And in she, Pennsylvania? Yeah. Really? And she, um, <laughs> she learned how to take cigars off the assembly line. It's got to be the most boring job in the world. <laughs> And put them in, in boxes. A, boxes. Yeah. So I said, Mom, how many do you do a day? 40,000. 40,000. Yeah. Just her. That's her. <laughs> and the, the, on a conveyor belt. On remember. the conveyor belt comes, you grab them, put them. Grab them <laughs> you, in eight hours. What type of cigars did they make in Pennsylvania? Well, I, who in knows? Okay. It was, it was coming all out of Cuba. You oh, know? okay. So it was good tobacco. Yeah. So, you know, and then she uh, goes up to quality control, which means she didn't have to pack anymore. Okay. She could stand by the Cigar line and take out the, uh, the, the bad stuff, the bad the stuff okay. which was better because better it was doing 40,000 yeah. boxes, right? Exactly. Now, Bernie, yeah. so when, now, okay, let's keep going ahead. You got to high school. Yep. Sports is now, did you, was sport, basketball was a main sport? Or you, no, no, no. Let, let me tell you. Mm. So the best way I could describe this is this was an athletic powerhouse. Okay, and what was the so, school? Uh, Swerble High School. Now, this is a public yeah, school. This is a public, public school. school. Okay. So you know Fred, Lou Michaels, Walt Michaels, John Pollock, you were resident. They all came from there. Came from my high school. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now, they can put out athletes, but don't ask what the SAT score is. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, yeah, who okay. cares? Who so cares? That, so, They're all in the Hall of Fame, right? Well, cares, you know, okay. so obviously. Uh, one of the things that you aspire to was to play for your school. Okay. And I played, that was a community school. That's right. a big deal. And and uh, great pride in the school, and great successes. And I played three sports. Oh, you, okay. So when I graduated, I actually had the opportunity to play either the three sports in college, but most of the scholarships or grants and aid were part time, mm -hmm. part mm -hmm. fifty percent. Mm -hmm. So it got down to either play football or play basketball, and there was a, a college, King's College, right. that said, uh, you know what? That's a basketball school, no football. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah, they had football at one time, they have now, but it was a basketball school. Okay. And the other one was to play football, and for some reason, I probably wasn't mature enough uh, to leave home. Uh, you with wanted some to stay near home yeah. with Kings. Okay. So I wound up playing uh, basketball for King's College. And so the for, famous coach. I mean, you used to tell me stories. Who was the famous coach that gave you the reality check? I think mean, uh, you had well, bad okay. grades or something. Oh, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's so what happens is, you know, eventually the academic kind of caught up with me, and I got in academic trouble. And so the way this goes is, you're going to go on probation. Well, I'm only going to miss the last because it was the first semester wasn't over before Christmas. Okay. It used to go till end yeah, of January. Yeah, I started college, same thing. Right, yeah. so I, you know, all of a sudden the grades come out and I'm gonna miss the last three weeks and I'm gonna be on probation. And I'm a little ticked at this because I thought they recruited me as an athlete and, and they certainly Heck need with me. the academics. They, they certainly need me. Now this is a Holy Brothers. This, this is a Holy Cross. These guys are run Notre Dame. They that, don't fool this around. Is, yeah. King's College is the uh, little brother yes. to Notre Dame. Yes. And so the bottom line on this is you got to go see the um, dean of students, right? I, You're expecting a deal. Well, I'm, well I'm, I don't care about the dean of students. I'm going to see my coach. Okay. And he comes and says, well, we don't operate that way this way. We're concerned that you get a good education. Yeah, and I'm like, well, this is a little disappointing. <laughs> so anyway, I got to go, 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 go see the dean of students. So you walk into this room, and there's chairs along the wall, and I know everybody. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a, unusual. There's 2,000 boys in this school, and I know everybody that's on probation. I don't know anybody who made the dean's <laughs> list, so I knew right away. You're hanging around the wrong I'm crowd here. With the <laughs> wrong crowd. So bottom line is uh, I'm talking to the dean of students, and he goes, look, Bernie. You know, we really appreciate you playing basketball for us, but 
there is not a future for you. Got to get the piece of paper. Gotta and get we paper. need you to be a graduate of our college. So uh, instead of going to basketball practice, uh, I will be holding uh, tutoring sessions uh -huh. uh, for... To get your grades up. Get your grades up. And it's uh, in the library. And it's on the 10th floor. And then he looks up and he goes, you do know where the library is. Or how to count the, or I said, to count the 10. Where, where's and I go, yeah. yes, I do. And he goes, well, uh, You'll be there. He's, you will be there. You know what? And it was, it was a great, sto it was a great uh, um, experience because I grew up. Because all of a sudden, it was, wait a minute. This guy's giving me books. a reality check. And, you know, I need to listen to this. And, by the way, my mother probably would never stop crying if I wasn't going to finish this college. Get the piece of paper. So I figured, I got to get this piece of paper, right? And um, so I became a better student and, um, and finished the basketball career. But it, it was a great experience. The first time I ever flew on an airplane, we flew to Notre Dame to play Notre Dame. Tell me about the, tell them the story about you had the guard. Who was a famous guy who scored 45? Oh, yeah, I held, well, <laughs> uh, what the heck was his name? But anyway, he was out of the math and yes, he's playing yeah. for Notre Dame. Great player. And, and I'm guarding him. And I held him to 28 points. <laughs> I'll tell you, it was a great that day. That was feeling good, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So bottom line was, um, why were we playing Notre Dame? Because the paycheck was good for King's sure. College. They made they, money. They, they made, made money. money. And, and Notre Dame, well, we're doing our you know, fellow school a favor, but it's a win in the column. A win's and, a win. A, a win's, win's a, win. a win. And it's the same way today. It's like, Austin well, Carr. Was it Austin Carr? Yeah. Austin Carr. So why, do, why, does, uh, why, does, uh, uh, why did Washington College play Duke one year? Money. Oh, yeah, because the X amount of money that they got it paid the food bill for the basketball sure. game for the whole, the whole season. year. It was yeah. a great deal. Yeah. So it was, it was different. But in retrospect, I often question myself, should I play football or should I play basketball? And, the, and I think I made the right decision because I went to the school which had the ap academic, academic emphasis first. to say, we're not going to let you out of here without a degree, and you're, but you're going to work Put the more. basketball away and hit Put the Put the books. basketball away and you're going to work. Okay. And, and, you know, so... But, you know, you, you're talking about first-generation kids, second-generation kid. kids. Kid. You know, our parents didn't go out to eat. No, no. On the basketball team, all of a sudden, we play in New York. Well, most of our games were in New York City, Jersey City that we played. Iona, Siena, St. Peter's. Good so, you, so, you, Good so you travel through the Poconos by bus, and you stop there to eat. White tablecloth. <laughs> You know, hey, pretty fancy dining, are, right? Yeah. yeah so fancy. all the all the guys on the basketball team, they're all poor kids who learn how to play yeah, basketball. That's a big and deal. And they're like, this is a big deal. So were we a good team? No. I mean, we had a first freshman. We were great because you played freshman. Freshman ball. ball so, sophomore year, eh. they caught up with you. Yeah. Junior year, we stunk. You know, <laughs> there's no question about it. <laughs> Bottom line, and I'll leave it there because the rest of it is. But it was a good experience. It was. It, it was. was a good experience. It was a great growing up social experience, Good. and I think that's what it's. And I think that's what it was meant to be. All right. And did we compete? Sure, but the bottom line is uh, learning how to travel, learning how to eat in restaurants. I mean, it's not a little different yeah, environment. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little different. different. It was good. Now, Bernie. Okay, were you an education major at Kings? No, I was oh. a biology major. Oh, you were science. Okay. Yeah. So, so I, how did you get here? So bottom line is Maryland has never been able to fill all the teacher vacancies. Okay, okay. big recruiting right. out of state. Every one of these counties used to travel up to Pennsylvania, New York, and West Virginia and recruit. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, um, here comes the recruiters to King's College, and uh, I get recruited. Now here's the first job, the first job offer I had was at in Anne Arundel County, Saverna Park, oh, Jr. Saverna, Saverna Park Junior High School. And the guy's name was Joe Morenzi. He used to be a principal at Annapolis. Okay. When they had all the problems, and then oh, he went Lord. to the center. So he takes a map out, and he draws a circle around it. He said, you know where Ritchie Highway is? No. <laughs> you, I, he said, you know where Saverna Park is? No. No. He says, I'm offering you a job. And you got five days to tell me whether you're going to take the job or not. Because oh, okay. he had a book of all the openings, openings oh, he yeah. had, right? 
my good friend Thad Kalmanovich, he had applied to Queen Anne's County. From your County. hometown. Yeah. From your hometown. So all of a sudden, he gets a job offer in Queen Anne's. Oh, we, okay. So we said, well, wait a minute. I'll try to apply to Queen Anne's County, see if I can get a job. So I applied, and this five-day clock is moving. Ticking. You yeah. You're going to make a decision. All right. And uh, I was just brash enough to call the superintendent and say, hey, I got a job offer. Are you going to offer me your job? Okay. And at that time, he said, well, we have to take this to the board, right? And uh, so on the fourth day, he called, you know, I call him again. I guess he's getting tired of me. He's, we had a board meeting last night. We're going to offer you a job. Oh, good. Stevensville Middle School. Do you know anything about teaching middle school? No. No. <laughs> I student taught in high school, you know. But Typical goes, education. Do, but do you think you could do it? I said, yeah. It's I a mean, paycheck. Well, it's how, a paycheck. How hard is this going to yeah, be? Yeah, yeah. So that's how I got to Maryland. Okay. And, and came so down. Thad had the job offer first. I here, know that. I okay. had the job in Anne Arundel offer okay. first. He had the job offer here first. So you started calling. And, and then it's like, you know, I guess I don't have anything to lose because I got a job in my pocket. But it'd be easier to split the expenses. We sure. should travel together. Well, that lasted for a couple of years. He gets married, you know, all the it's rest all right. of that but stuff. Are, but that's good. So you're Steven. How long were you at Stevens well, teaching science? Yes, yeah, six. So six or seven years. Oh, but I had a, a couple but of I years. But I had an opportunity, and they had what was called night school, night school principal. Okay. Now, these how were, nicely used to do it at Queen Anne's these, County High School. These yeah. were uh, uh, courses for anyone could take yeah. it, but for... Adult, adult ed stuff. So. Adult ed. Yeah, yeah. And three nights a week. Well, I didn't pay much, but I needed money, so I'm going to do this kind of stuff. And you showed some administrative But I got a title with it. Yeah. So lo and behold, Queen Anne's County, as all things happen, generations start to retire, and there's an opening at Southersville Middle School. Okay, which right. you once told me was your all-time favorite job. I know. Well, my all-time, you know, so I was a principal, I was a supervisor, a job I th thoroughly did not like, <laughs> assistant superintendent, a superintendent in the K-12, and a superintendent in the K-12 realm. The best job in the world is being a principal. The best, it is one of the great American You're jobs. You're the captain of the ship. You get to develop your team. Yes. You have the content. You got in this to work with students. Mm -hmm. You get to work with these students. And all of a sudden, it's yours. What you make of it is yours. Yeah. You said you love the Southersville community. So now, this is the sem I mean, the seventies. Yeah. 70s. So I get to Southersville, and beside the two first-year teachers they hired, I'm the youngest person on the faculty, and, and I'm you're the, the principal. principal. <laughs> but it was great because of all the stupid things I did, the faculty Help made you. up for me and helped Good. me, Good. and I had a great secretary. Francis Clark. So whenever I would have these great ideas to do something that would never work. But she'd, I shake, thought, she'd shake you well, She didn't shake you away. She oh. just came in and said, you don't want to do that. <laughs> Good she goes, right. you don't want to do that. They saved and you know what? Life. All of a sudden, it was great. And one of the things I still remember about the Southernville community, uh, when they had the individual high schools, they had great pride. Mm -hmm. And the first thing the um, uh, PTA is doing is they're selling these t-shirts. And on it, it was Southernsville Middle, Pride Inside. And I'm like, Pride Inside? Well, yeah. There was such pride in that community. That whole community and that school. You know, and when I did screw up, and you make decisions that you You're would never make, make yeah. uh, I had parents who come in and say, look, I don't think that's the smartest thing, but uh, go for it, we'll and we're going to support we'll it. it. Good. That's a nice community. Now, the other thing that I didn't know was I get up there, and immediately the superintendent says, Oh, by the way, we're going to renovate this building. Now this is Harry Rhodes, Dr. Rhodes? No, no, this no, no. is Mr. Webb. Oh, Jack I, Webb, Jack yeah. Webb. So he goes, we're going to start renovation. And then he retires, and then John Miller picks up. Mm -hmm. We're going to renovate. We're going to renovate Southernsville Middle School. But you don't get any relocatables because we can't get any from the state. It's going to be room to room. Oh, Lord. Oh, my God. Well, you, you could. You're moving they equipment and no, kids. Well, they and would they... arrest the superintendent and the principal if you tried to do it today. <laughs> so we're moving. Workers working in a hallway. That we had no mm. cafeteria. We got bag lunch. School's going on. School's going on. Oh, the, no. the gym is broken down into four classrooms. The fourth one is George Ickes yeah, and the shop. He's running the bandsaw. The other teachers are trying to teach. <laughs> teach we got 40-watt light bulbs strung over things. 
No heat. <laughs> I got uh, Michelle Hampton. Yeah. Uh, she's teaching for me. She's got her gray maxi coat, her hat on, her <laughs> gloves, right? We wind up with the best Iowa test scores oh, wow. and the best uh, absentee so rate. So much for environment, And right? it's like, well, you know, maybe the bottom line was it was such a community that supported the kids, the families wanted their kids in school, and it was a great learning experience for me. But what happens, Fred, is mm. the last day, my office furniture comes in, and we struggle through this. And I'm looking at it, and I said, well, it was worth it. And I get a call, and it's uh, central office, and uh, it's um, Mr. Miller and Jack Smigel, and said, we, we need you to come down here. I want to talk to you. I said, okay. okay. So and that's never good news. No, that's the boss never, calls you in trouble. Yeah, and, and I said to Francis, "Did I? Did I? What I do?" And she goes, "Don't worry about it. There's nothing I know of." Mm -hmm. So I get down to the central office, and they're smiling, and I'm like, "Oh my God, I'm going to get fired. I must have did some." And uh, they said, "So what do you think about uh, if we transferred you to Stevensville Middle School?" So from Southern Middle opposite yeah, end of the county. Yeah, and I said, you know, yeah. So I said. I don't, I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah, I like I'm to be able, I'm comfortable. I want to work my, and they go, okay, you're being you're transferred. You're going to Stevens. Oh, you're going. Well, thanks, thanks for the, thanks for the <laughs> input, but you're going. And I said, okay. And oh, by the way, we're starting renovation. <laughs> so it, well, you were the expert so somebody, that somebody made a sign, you know, success is always under construction, <laughs> and they gave it to me. So I'm down at Stevens, and all of a sudden, uh, what they didn't tell me was, um, they had great issues in the community with the school at that time. And every one of the teachers had asked for a transfer. Mm. The only person who didn't ask for a transfer was the secretary, and she was married to an assistant superintendent. <laughs> so you were safe there. She so was I safe. had uh, Bon El Zakari, and they said, you know, so I go, oh, what am I getting myself in? So we get down there, and here's what I realized. We had a lot of, t I mean, these were extremely talented young teachers. teachers. But young, the, they were young. They were right? young, yeah. and, and they just needed to come together, and we did. Good. It took about a year, and all of a sudden, we were going to grow that same pride that they had in Southersville now, at Stevensville. Now, Brandon, let, let me go back. How long were you at Southersville? I was years? principal there for four years. Oh, four, and then they moved you after four. Yeah, and I was down at Stevensville for eight years. Oh, so they kept you right. quite a while there. Yeah, well, okay. uh, and all of a sudden, uh, we get a little cocky. We're good. We know we're good. Uh -uh. And all, you know, and say, well, how do we know? We just have to continue to perform. But it was a transformation that uh, teachers all of a sudden, you know, you think you know what you're doing as a first year teacher. You don't. You think you know what you're doing as a second year no, teacher. You're Probably not. You're always All of a sudden, so you just not. need to come together. And uh, I was very fortunate to inherit, to inherit talent. And all a of a sudden, of young if I could just kids. direct them, uh, and well, well, you had Mulaski, you had Hunter, right? Well, I had you, all those yeah, people, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I had a lot of really good um, classroom teachers, good. you know, uh, Shelberg, and I could go on and yeah, on. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to say it because I'm going to miss somebody. Uh -huh. But the bottom line is, uh, so after eight years, I got 12 years as a principal, and we have an opening to central office for a science supervisor. And I figured, sure. I want to go up central to central office, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, at that time, the progression was central office. I go to central office, and I spent a year in a job that I did not like. You were the science supervisor, correct? right? Yeah. And I w I'm not a curriculum writer. I am not a patient person. I got to see results. Bottom line is, I'm going to watch teachers teach, and they're better science teachers than I was. What am I going to tell them as a science teacher? But you could direct them, and here's how you can get better. Bottom line is next generation, uh, Mr. Zakarian retired as an assistant so superintendent. You just kept going staff, up. And I was fortunate enough to um, uh, become the assistant superintendent now, how for long did supporting you run? services. Oh, okay. So you ran the whole non yeah, every classroom. Yeah, stuff. none of this stuff were the class. Bus drivers, sports, uh, finance, building, yeah. bus drivers, sports, food, all of that. Did you like All that? of this stuff. Yeah. Did you the, like that, Jack? Yes, oh, you did because like you can see results. Okay, because you can see results. All you right? can see bus schedules. You can see sports right. schedules. You can see buildings going up. That yeah, kind of and stuff. I probably spoke the language more to the bus drivers yeah. than you always like that side. Yeah, you I like that, that side, side. Yeah. the business side. Right. And it was like, hey, let's you know. Now, how long did you do that? 
So I guess it was seven years. Oh, and, you, you, yeah. oh I didn't know you did that long. And then, lo and behold, we have a superintendency. And um, the first superintendency I didn't get, Joe Schilling was there for mm -hmm. two years. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line on it was when he left, uh, we had an opening. I applied for the job, got the job. And again, uh, then for 14 years, I was the superintendent. 14, you were the, yeah. uh, I, now correct me, you were the longest serving superintendent at, at some point, correct? I was the longest uh, serving superintendent in the state of Maryland uh, at, at that point in time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I developed a great relationship with Nancy Grasmick, who was the state superintendent. And she was the longest serving state superintendent, state superintendent okay. in the United States. Okay. All right. And consequently, uh, you know, I thought she was a great leader, and uh, we didn't agree on Is everything. Is she still alive, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. And we didn't agree on a lot of things, but she was willing to work together. Good. And we as superintendents then, uh, we were determined that we were going to make sure that this state was prominent in the United States. And we became prominent. Right. Which is everything, right? Right. Scores, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, things were changing, and as superintendent, I realized that there was value in the critics that we had in the school system. Because even though we've said, you know, we're a great school system and we're going to offer quality, we didn't always do it. And so the, the things that I am most, um, you know, most proud of was we moved, if you take all the test scores, and I don't believe the test scores are the end of all of everything, mm -hmm. but if you look at quality indicators and say, uh, take all the quality indicators for all the school systems in the state of Maryland, when I became superintendent, we were about 12th. Yeah, we were. Right, we were in the, the middle. middle of the pack. And, you know, and everybody said, ah, there's more be people behind yeah. us. But there's, you know, but there was 11 ahead of us. Mm -hmm. So, to, so all, we got into what, what would be now primitive data analysis, all right? And Fred, you're a great sports guy. And, mm -hmm. you know, data analytics yeah. now. Saber metrics. Well, it's the same analytical. thing in education. Yeah, You've yeah. got to be looking at that data. And we start looking at some you know, preliminary data. Who can teach reading and who can't teach reading? Who can teach mathematics and who can't? Who, how are our kids doing in high school with the AP teachers? You, you always know? kept the stuff in your desk drawer. I remember I'd walk in, you pull out your drawer and you had the numbers. Well, right? I had numbers. Yeah. Well, numbers, you know, I went yeah. to one, high, one of the high school principals and I said, you know, this person's teaching uh, AP calculus and you only have 40% of the class yeah. passing and getting a three or better. Tell you what, we got to do we better. We got to change. We got to change. change. Got to change. So the bottom line is we start doing dead at night. When I left, we our goal was to be quality education for all of our students. And then the second thing, we wanted to be in the top quartile. We didn't get it. the most money. And, and we hit it. it. You did it. And we hit it. So we moved from 12th to, to sometimes as high as three, some we were areas right up there two, knocking on the door. and then six. So we're yeah. there. But we wanted to make sure we, we stayed there. So that was a great accomplishment. The second thing is, when I became su assistant superintendent and then later on a superintendent, I inherited uh, a, a rapid growth school system. We didn't have the capacity. We had to build schools. And the schools we had were antiquated. Mm -hmm. So we had to build another high school. We had to build Mattapique Middle. We had to build Mattapique well, Elementary. I don't know. Look, at any time I go down to Ken Island, I mean, that high school has become a community center. Athletics, they, academics, they plays, be, and whatever. All of the schools should be. Yeah. So basically, except uh, for Southernville, uh, under my direction, but, and again, I don't want to say mine because it's team. Your team. It's, your it's team, team, and had great people. The bottom line on it is um, we renovated everything we had and built new buildings. Schools right? were newer, brighter, better, right. and just and, conducive to education. Right. And, and uh, we sat down with community people, and we said, we got to come up with a, a plan. So here's the plan. In 10 years, we, here's what we want to do. And we didn't get there in 10 years. It took us 12, 13 years. But you still got there. The, it depended on the money. Yeah. So the bottom line is we all of a sudden modernized the fleet. Sure. And we looked good. The other thing that I'm really proud of, and I've given a number of talks on this, I think the greatest piece of legislation, civil rights legislation, was Title IX. Okay. Without Helping a doubt. Helping young women be able to perform. Young women. Yes. And so all of a sudden, we got to open up the opportunities for You've these You've got women. women lacrosse teams. You've got women basketball we teams. We didn't You've got have swimming yeah. teams. Now we have co-ed yeah. swimming, and yeah. women are swimming. 
We didn't have soccer. Yeah. And all of a sudden, and now we have, and lacrosse. And all of a sudden, you know, we can't, get enough, we can't get enough coaches, coaches. <laughs> because the hunger of these women, uh, these women to want to play. And I used to say girls, and all of a sudden I had these high school young ladies come to me and say, women? I said, sorry, <laughs> never make that mistake again. You but, learned. But in retrospect. You had a daughter, didn't, that didn't, oh, hurt. That didn't yeah. hurt. And the bottom line on it is I do think that Title IX, not only what we did in Queen Anne's County, but the what, whole what happened in the country, whole country, is the reason women have broken the glass ceiling. I mean, you got. I mean, we could talk about Steinem. Sports she, pays. She this winter was all on Iowa women's basketball, was it not? I mean, come Caitlin on. Caitlin Clark. Yeah, come on. Caitlin Clark. Still the front page, whether you know, we agree or disagree. Well, page. exactly. But, but I, I think, you know, we had people who didn't want to do that. Uh -huh. well, do they that. fought against it. Well, we had people it. that fought us, the Board of Education, about building the Ken Island High School. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, is that ridiculous? We were going, <laughs> we were going to go to 4,000 students. The projections are showing Now that. I can't imagine Ken Island without Ken Island. And I don't exactly. think I'm going to lose that. But you know, look, we're almost going to run out of time, so let me speed hit. You did 14 years superintendent. Then Nancy Grasmick asked you to be the interim. How did that work? So Nancy Grasmick decides, for one reason, that she's going to retire. And I've been working as a special advisor to her, mm -hmm. uh, trying to get uh, money from the federal government. And, uh, and state passed high stakes testing okay. to get a high school diploma. And we knew that 20% of students in, in the state mm -hmm. may have difficulty with that. Help. So help. I was a part of a three-member team. And I did the administrative part. The other two were the instructional people to come up with Bridge to Excellence, mm -hmm. which gave students an opportunity to demonstrate competency without a paper and pencil An alternative test. to a written test. Right. Paper and pencil. While I'm doing that, uh, she retires, and the board uh, said they, they were very they were used to me, mm -hmm. and they came in and they said, were "Comfortable, you come very comfortable." Uh, would you consider being a state superintendent for one year? You can't apply, but it, uh, it might be six months. Yeah. You know, after the first month it became a year, and, uh, and I said, "It's an honor. Sure. It is a privilege." State superintendent. There's so, only fifty of them in the whole country, right? Yeah. So <laughs> uh, I served in that capacity, and I could have gone back to the state, but one of the state board members, uh, Dr. Charlene Dukes, was a community college president. And she said, we have an opening, uh, and the title is executive director for Maryland Association of Community, community Colleges, College. the umbrella group for community colleges. And, and I that's do all not, the community colleges in the state. Right, all and I do not, and I said, Charlene, I don't understand all the intricacies of students, loans, and all mm -hmm. that. So we want to talk to you. So basically, they said, you've spent so much time in Annapolis. You know how to write right? a game. You know how to write. We want you to be our executive director and be our chief lobbyist. So I go, wait a minute. All right. <laughs> so I uh, said, tell you what we'll do. I said, I will do it for a year. If you're not satisfied, no I'm hard feelings, I'm okay. gone. Okay. So I, I did it for nine years, and then it was like... <laughs> That's a long year, right? Right. And, <laughs> and, and one of the things, Fred, and, and one, so the uh, people understand, uh, you hear uh, dual enrollment, dual enrollment. Mm -hmm. Well, community colleges have pushed dual enrollment. K to 12, they were like, okay, maybe one yeah. or two courses. We had to drag them through the mud. Oh, no. uh, the four years, oh, we, the greatest thing we in the had world. to drag them through. The greatest now thing in the world. these students are dual enrollment. Yeah. This is a project that I'm really... Uh, you know, proud of, and these students now can take that, and it's transferable. You get credit. You get credit. I have grandchildren who got a year of college a done year the of they college. graduate. Parents yeah. just save $25,000. Yeah, sure. Nowadays, it's a major thing. It's, it's a major thing. So uh, I've had a 50-some uh, years of one type of either K-12 to state or community college. And enjoyed it and, all. And, and I enjoyed it, and I enjoyed it. But your initial question was, which job did you like the most? Greatest job in education, young people. Be the principal. Be the young princi teachers. But I got to tell you, I thought we had a lot of successes when I was superintendent, but it was because we had great principals. So what's the secret, Fred? Good people. Good people, <laughs> and invest in them. Sure. Pay them well. Pay your teachers well. Invest in Please a, keep your mind in the public of that, please. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm serious. I mean, look, I mean, you, cheap labor, you, that's what you that's get. What you that's what you get. That's what you get. Rather than a Cadillac. Right. Bottom line. Bernie, I got about one minute. Important questions. 
You have a son, is a colonel, United is States he, Army. Right, Queen Anne County High School graduate, West Point graduate, tours of duty, uh, All over Afghanistan, the world. Yeah. Iraq, the Middle East, four uh, hardship to, tours of duty, and still in. And, and gotta, so he's yeah. a battalion commander. Okay. Now, where's Jessica? Where's your daughter? My daughter, uh, she's a lawyer by trade, a labor lawyer by trade. Uh, one of the first jobs she got uh, coming out of law school was by the state teachers union, right. labor lawyer. Yes. So she worked for, uh, was it MSTA or yes. MSCA? Yeah, whatever now. they call it. They whatever the they call it. And she worked uh, with her support people, became the chief uh, negotiator mm -hmm. for the support people. Good. Good for uh, and she would uh, negotiate with the Anne Arundel County Board of Education. They had an opening, they offered it to her. So she went, went over there as a negotiator and investigator, da 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 da. Yeah. So right now, uh, I'm not even sure of the exact. What she does. She's the head of their HR department. Good for her. Right? Good for you. Right. Now, I got that last question: retirement. How do you like it? Golf. How many well, days a week? Well, you know, I like <laughs> golf. Yeah. I don't. I'm not in love with the game like some people. Yeah. I like it. Right. But uh, as you know, because you see me on a trail, I do two things. I ride my bike, bike in the morning, I ride mm -hmm. nine miles, seven to nine miles, depending on the wind, and then whenever I can, uh, I play golf. Good. But the, uh, the reward in my life is to watch the grandkids play. And how many grandkids now? So we got four grandkids, got four. three of them are old enough to play. And oh, sport. Let me explain. Oh, they, they play. I mean, they play basketball, they play... <laughs> they play. They go your weekends. <laughs> they play soccer, football, and the big one is obviously... Uh, lacrosse. Oh, big so yeah. this past weekend, my wife was in um, uh, Cecil County. I was in Delaware. <laughs> oh, watching. Uh, and then from Delaware, I went to Worcester <laughs> County to watch. And we, you know, just changed it around for Sunday. So sat in the sun, watched all the games, and uh, I just, you know, appreciate that they like to compete. Good. And, and I know fun. you're kids. Yeah, they're, they're all the grandkids. Kids. It's great. And, and I think that's the reward in life. Yeah. Well, Bernie, I apologize. Are, is that not the quickest 30 minutes in your life? It is quick. It's good. Thank you very much. I good luck on the golf course. And I'll see you on the trail. Uh, well, Fred, before I leave, I yes. just want to tell you. Yeah. I watched your veteran show. Oh, good. It's a good show. You did a great job. We were very lucky. We thank you. We have a good group of veterans. There's 3,530 veterans that live in this county. Can you believe that? Well, but I think... The whole issue of you bringing attention and honoring it, that's your, that's your baby. That's thank that's you very much. Well, thank Appreciate you for doing it. it. Bernie, thanks again. Our time is up. My name's Fred McNeil. Thank you for watching QAC TV 7. My time's up. Thank you for your time. We're going to see you next time. Mm -hmm.